Hi Warriors, this is Jaylen, my legal warrior, and today we have a very special guest, financial advisor, Mahalian Dule, and she is from Vista Del Mar Wealth Management. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So tell me a little bit more about Vista Del Mar Wealth Management. So I actually started my career back in 2007, right before the 2008 financial crisis. So if you can imagine, that was a really interesting time, to say the least, for getting started. Um, but I think it's really showed just a lot of experience to see what clients have gone through and what their emotions are going through with their investments during a really unstable period and uncertain period for many, and then to see the rebound, um, you know, over the years thereafter. Um, so, um, so I started with a, with a company back in 2007, and then in 2018, I decided to take the leap of faith and open up my own boutique financial planning firm here in San Diego, uh, which is now Vista Del Mar Wealth Management. And so what I do is I specialize in working with young professionals, families, and small business owners with different areas of financial planning. So um, from savings and budgeting to uh, defensive strategies like life insurance and other needs. I'm also taking a look at retirement planning um, and working with other professionals like tax advisors, estate planning attorneys, et cetera, to make sure that all the proper documents are in place for um, wealth transfer and also just uh, tax planning as well. So, Got it. Well, that's a very extensive experience. So thank you so much for, again, taking time out of your very busy day uh, cool. to you know, record this with me. Yeah. So one of the questions that I had on my mind is mm -hmm. you know, stimulus checks coming out, um, or maybe some of them have gotten them already. Um, but have you seen individuals just taking their stimulus checks to you and like, okay, I want to go ahead and invest. What can I do with this? <laughs> Uh, so um, honestly, I think I've only had a handful of clients ask or tell me that they've received their stimulus checks. So um, I mean, you're talking about the millions of Americans that are waiting for this. So you know, I've only seen again just a handful. Um, but I have questions or have had questions from clients and other individuals asking me about what I should do with my stimulus check, um, which is you know similar to what you're asking. And so uh, one of the things that I look at first is uh, you know the stimulus check was designed to help pay bills. So if you are struggling in terms of having a loss of income because of COVID-19, then use that to pay for your bills. I mean, there's no reason why that you should go hungry, have your family go hungry, um, you know, during this time. So use that stimulus bill for what it was meant for. Um, in other areas, I also take a look at debt management. So let's say if there was either um, like a high interest revolving debt like credit cards or a car payment that one was looking to try to pay down during this time, then a stimulus check could also be used for that. Um, now, one of the tricky things is just trying to find a balance in the whole financial planning process. So it's not to say that one should take their entire stimulus check and then just pay off their debt immediately. Uh, because things are uncertain for many and for those that might have experienced some kind of uh, loss in income, through job loss. Um, another important thing to consider with that stimulus check is just building a short-term emergency cushion. So something that they can have easily either at their savings at their bank or credit union, um, something that's easily accessible for them to have as a rainy day fund. Uh, again, who knows how long a lot of this is going to be or even how long it's going to take for the economy to fully recover. And so I think having a strong emergency cushion may be really helpful um, in place. So uh, with a lot of my clients, after having the discussion about, uh, you know, again, are they, are they able to uh, continue to pay for their day-to-day -day expenses um, and still be able to live, if they've been able to have a handle on managing their debt, um, and if they also have a strong emergency cushion, then that's where we should look at having additional resources to invest, whether that's increasing their contributions to their accounts, um, or like it, we talked about here at the stimulus check, possibly taking that and investing it in areas where it might make sense for their situation. And then what are the top three main pillars that one should have as a foundation before they invest? Yeah, absolutely. So um, first and foremost is just have a plan in place. And for a lot of my clients, the, the way that I like to work is that it's very goal-oriented, um, goal meaning we talk about what are your most 
important financial goals, short-term goals, like do you plan on buying a house or is college savings important for kids um, or for your kids? Uh, is you know having a stable retirement when that time comes important to you? Do you want to continue to travel when you retire or even in the next few years, um, you know, be able to travel? So first and foremost is have a plan. Uh, you know, it's like driving a car but not having a map or having a destination to go. And so, you know, just having um, a plan in place and having those financial goals, I think is a really important pillar of foundation. And um, then the next thing is, uh, again, looking at what I had talked about earlier, um, a handle on debt management and emergency savings. So uh, what one tool that sounds really simple, and for some people, uh, you know, they, they know it's important, but maybe shy away from it is using a budget. And, you know, it's as simple as knowing what income comes in and what expenses go out. So then that way we can see what is left over, if anything, or if you're constantly in the red or always going down to zero, we can use the budget as a tool to be able to analyze how to cut out different expenses and really how to live within means of the income that's put in place. So that would be the second thing is having handling on the budget. So uh, like I talked about earlier, that kind of ties into that is the debt management and the emergency cushion. Um, for somebody that, let's say, doesn't have a strong rainy day fund, I usually say you should look at at least three to six months worth of um, income in a short-term cash reserve type of account. And uh, that's for, again, paying for anything that you need immediately. Um, for homeowners, if your water heater breaks, that's you know pretty expensive. Um, if for most people here in San Diego, driving a car, I mean, uh, maintenance, maybe you need tires, that can get pretty pricey <laughs> over time. And having to either one, uh, you know, swipe your card and add more credit card debt or to take from investments like retirement accounts is generally not the best way to pay for short-term debt. So uh, again, having a handle on the short-term foundation is also important. So then the next thing that I would look at is what we call our defensive strategies. And um, basically that is looking at wills and trusts, having the beneficiaries updated and on my end, and more importantly, also having uh, the right type of insurance and the right amount of insurance. So some people, you know, again, also shy away from life insurance, maybe because nobody likes to talk about death and mortality. Um, but in, in my experience, what I've seen is that for people who do pass away, again, with not having a plan or not having enough life insurance, that means that it leaves our families with either having to deal with probate, which can be really costly, um, having to pull from retirement investments to pay off debt or medical bills. Um, and so it can really put a big, uh, you know, a, a big dent in the beneficiaries or the survivors' um, own financial plans by a person not having the proper, uh, you know, proper plan in place. And, and like I mentioned, I work really closely with estate planning attorneys to make sure that the wealth transfer is there as well. I mean, having life insurance and, you know, different policies in place is one thing, but not having a written plan to help facilitate that um, can also be really problematic. So I know you talked about three, but then the last thing again would be <laughs> on the investment side um, is saving for saving for your goals. So um, for a lot of people, I think at some point, people would like to retire. I mean, the face of retirement has changed so much over the last 50 to 60 years. Um, people are living longer and they're even working longer. So usually when I talk to people and ask them, you know, what kind of retirement they would like to have, instead of asking what age they'd like to retire, um, now I start asking them, at what point do you see yourself scaling back from full-time work? Because again, some people might want to continue to work part-time thereafter. Um, but using different strategies, like if an employer has a 401k plan that does matching, um, that's a really great way to save and invest into, um, into retirement. Um, if a person is eligible with their income and they have resources available, there are what we call tax advantage accounts like Roth IRAs that can be a really great complement to the 401k plans and pensions. Um, so, you know, overall, again, having a plan, um, using the budgeting tool to be able to utilize um, 
income and resources efficiently. And then thirdly is going back to the first, knowing what your financial goals are, tying those into what investment and insurance portfolios would be most appropriate for someone. And so how can one get started on investing with you? Uh, um, so I would say one is just do a little bit of research. Now, um, there are definitely some people that I come across that like to do things completely on their own. And I mean, if that's their forte, then that's great. You know, I mean, if you have the time and know what to look for, then, um, you know, some people can be really successful at doing their own investing. So, you know, again, even, even for those that might not want to do it on their own or have the time or ability to do it completely on their own, I would say even do just a little bit of research to know, uh, one, for example, like what kind of benefits are available through your employer? Do they have a 401k plan or a 403b plan available? Do they match? Uh, what kind of insurance benefits are available um, you know, through health, disability, life insurance. And then more importantly, as we're seeing right now through COVID-19 is um, what are the options for those plans should your job be terminated? And, you know, what, what do you do with all of those benefits? And should you get something in place to complement what your employer has to offer to make sure that you can continue to save towards your important financial goals, um, you know, even after that in that situation? Um, so the, the second thing then I would um, tell people is know what your risk temperament is, uh, meaning that everybody's situation is obviously very different. There's no cookie cutter financial plan for anybody for that matter. Um, and your financial plan is going to change based off of life changes and what happens in the market. But knowing how much risk you as an investor are willing to take on is also really important uh, because maybe myself or any other advisor might say, okay, this is what I think is um, you know, appropriate based on your time horizon, but if a person is not willing to take on that, that amount of risk or is wanting to take more risk than I had ori originally recommended, then it's a, you know, a deeper conversation that we want to have because at the end of the day, the, the recommendation, again, needs to be suitable for my clients, not even um, outside of just how much they have to invest and what their time frame is in using that money. But again, how much risk are they willing to take on? So that would be the second. Um, and then thirdly is talk to a professional. There are tons of financial advisors out there. And I think that for at least for me, one thing that I really pride myself on is having strong relationships with my clients. Uh, like I said, I started back in 2007 and I'm really proud and happy to say that a lot of my clients have been with me for, um, if not since day one, at least for pretty close to that period of time. So 10 plus years. Um, and I think that really shows, you know, a great testament to just, again, building the, the long-term relationship with them, that it's not just working with my clients, but even working with their kids um, and other family members. I've, you know, in my career, unfortunately, had some clients that passed away and had to work with their kids. And some of them were you know, 18, just graduated from high school, um, not, you know, still trying to figure out what to do with their life. Parents had passed away and now what to do with their money thereafter. So, so for me, um, especially having a family myself, I really understand the importance of, um, again, those, I keep reiterating, but the, those long-term relationships, um, I think that's a really big foundation for how I work with a lot of my clients. So. Very good. Well, thank you so much again for being with us and sharing some very top-notch information with our viewership. If our viewership had wanted to get a hold of you, um, do you have social media handles, email, and phone number in, where, in which they could go ahead and use to get in touch with you? The best is to email me, and that's at M, as in my first initial, Mahaline, so mdulai at vistadelmarwm.com. And if you want to learn more also about my approach to working with clients um, and also my approach to working with the community, I'm a really big ad advocate for activism and community outreach. Um, you can also check out my website at vistadelmarwm.com. Um, and if you type in also Vista Del Mar WM, you can find me on Facebook as well as on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much again. Thanks for and having I appreciate me. having you here. And I guess we will be in touch very soon. Okay, sounds good. All 
All right, thanks, warriors.